What happens if we take an already great performing air, yo, we stretch out the radiator and we add another fan? Exactly, an even bigger financial problem. We already had a look at the Iceberg Thermal Ice Flow Oasis 240 and just to recap that one, surprisingly good performance or max performance in all three presets and the Noise 2 performance of these 2200 RPM fans is a bit too good for my liking. And that just made the whole thing perform more like an average 360 than a 240. But there is also a 360mm version on which we'll focus today, but to spare those of you who have already seen the 240mm video sometime, you can skip to this timestamp, because everything I am about to say you have already heard, and I can imagine that listening to my bass-filled voice might sound appealing, but according to my therapist, after 15 minutes you will phase out anyway, so just skip to here. An Iceflow Oasis 360 comes in the usual AIO type of packaging containing the AIO itself, not pre-installed fans, installation material for both AMD and Intel, and some splitters. And this very handy Moldex to PWM adapter so that your pump can run at full speed all the time. And one thing I gotta say, the thermal paste that Iceberg includes is like one of the thickest I have seen so far. This is basically concrete and it's actually hard to get that stuff out. Anyway, at its core we got a 55.5 by 55.5 big copper base with a 3100 RPM quick 3-pin voltage controlled pump sitting on top and at max speed it does create a, a very slight like whistle noise if nothing else is working but later on in the noise benchmarks you will see that the noise isn't nearly loud enough to make it above noise floor at a meter so as long as any fan is running inside your system that is going to be louder than the pump so that's fine. On top of that we got the rotatable cover which okay yeah you, you can turn that in 360 great. I guess it is, I really do. In the end, you can install the base or like the water block pump combo in all four directions when you're going with Intel or two if you are on AMD. So this might be useful to you. And on top of that, we got a Iceback Thermal logo with some ARGB. Now I really gotta say, the ARGB implementation on top of that block just looks incredible. It's out of this world. I have no clue what Iceback Thermal has done here, but this doesn't look like anything I am usually seeing. This looks more like a digital screen. It looks more like that than just a bunch of LEDs soldered together. The transitions are clean as hell and I don't know, whatever they have done, it doesn't matter. The ARGB, at least on that block, absolutely stunning. Coming out of there, we got 450mm long braided tubes which are adjustable at the water block end. Everything looks and feels quite high quality, I would even say a bit upper class. For the actual cooling, we got a regular 27mm thick radiator with some ice pack thermal branding on the side. We counted 19 fins per inch, which is fine. It's not particularly dense, for an AIO at least, but it's it's pretty much the standard. The air is being pushed through using Iceback Thermal's Ice Gale Lightning. These are 2200 RPM quick 4-pin PVM and 3-pin ARGB fans that can do up to 76.74 CFM at up to 2.8 mm of H2O. The ARGB power comes from the center and it's alright. The light reaches the end of the milky acrylic fan impeller and it's controllable using 3-pin ARGB which is daisy trainable so really nothing to nag here. They are being sold separately and I already have a pack in house so we will see at a later point how well these perform in different scenarios but for now in my opinion they are probably the reason for the good performance results. For 2200 RPM they are definitely silent like really silent but and that still makes me wonder in no way are they in any way perfect because of how they are built, you got that pretty big gap in between the fans, which usually translates to spillback, which then translates into lost performance, especially when it comes to radiate. But before we get to that, to get the AIO going on Intel, we first need to slide the Intel bracket onto the water block, position the appropriate Intel backplate behind the motherboard, and then make it stay using the screws. Then apply some of that thermal paste and screw down the water block pump combo with the spring screws. Over on AMD, we only need to shove the AMD bracket onto the base and use the original AMD retention brackets to attach the AIO. And if you want to make your life easier, pre-attach the holding pieces to the AIO and keep them as loose as possible. It's way easier to do than doing what Iceback Thermal tells you in the manual, where you have the hooks and you attach the hooks to the brackets and then you somehow try to fiddle the AIO on top of that and then you try to screw it down and it will just fall apart. Just pre-attach it, let it loose, it's way easier. And now let's finally get to the performance. <clears throat> we benchmark all of our 
or coolers on top of a 3900K featuring three presets, 120, 250 and 320 watts. First we benchmark max performance on each of them and then we slowly lower the fan speed in 10% steps while also measuring the noise to create a noise to performance curve. For AIOs we keep the pump running at full speed all the time. At 120 watts going through the socket aka your average gaming session we are looking at a fantastic result. At 26.8 degrees C above ambient the Oasis 360 performed amongst the best AIOs I have seen so far even outperforming a bunch of 420s. Seems like the cold plate is perfect for lower level loads. The noise to performance graph really doesn't look bad either. Actually it is also among the best. One of the best noise to performance ratios I have seen so far and going down from there it performs pretty much identical to a Silverstone Ice Mist 420 or a Nucleus CR360. But that was only 120 watts and at that point there is hardly any heat going to the whole system anyway. So let's go to 250. At 250 the position did not really change. At 52.1 degrees C above ambient it still outperformed a bunch of 420s and it landed at the top of the list. The corresponding noise to performance might not be as beautiful but it still showcases how well balanced that thing is. From start to finish the Oasis 360 stayed just an inch behind the bigger Silverstone Ice Mist which is just astonishing considering how well already the nucleus was like compared to everything else. And this is even a step beyond that. Sure this is basically just one or two degrees in the best case scenario but still noise to performance the ice flew did a fantastic job at 250. At 320 watts the Oasis was still not done. Now it managed to get to the second spot of the list again a margin of error away or behind the much bigger ice mist. The corresponding noise to performance graph is also quite interesting. For the first two measuring points so 190% fan speed the Oasis and ice mist 420 are fighting for who's in charge and going down from there the superior size of the 420 just naturally wins and puts the Oasis 360 in its place but this is still an amazing result. And at this point it's not even just about the fans anymore. In the 240mm video I said that I credit most of the performance of the whole thing here to the fans because they are so damn freaking quiet at 2200 rpm. But at this point it seems like the cold plate is also just fantastic. For all three workloads 120, 250 and 320 the Oasis 360 as a whole was capable of getting so much heat out of the system or away from the chip so that every other area was always a whole step behind or any other comparably sized area. I am shocked. I was expecting that the 360 would be or would perform one or maybe two or possibly even three degrees better than the 240 but I also thought that the cold plate of the system as a whole would reach a limit at some point and that the whole thing wouldn't perform as miraculously as it did. But in the end it just doesn't really matter. Maybe it's the cold plate, maybe it's the pump, maybe it's the fantastic 19 FPI radiator, who knows, it doesn't really matter because as a whole this thing performs just surprisingly good. And at 90 USD on Amazon US I really can't say anything negative about that. It performs like a champ, you got 7 years of warranty and the only thing that I really dislike about it is the fact that you need goddamn pliers to remove this goddamn screw. Who thought this was a smart idea? So if you're planning to cool down a, it doesn't even really matter, a 4900K, a 7950X, 3D or non 3D, this thing can handle it and it has my full recommendations. But okay, this should be all for Icepack Thermal and their Oasis in 360. And at this point, a huge thank you to Icepack Thermal for sending it over. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server. So if you wanna join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership. So if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance. Except for the NDA stuff, because you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to get an even bigger blowtorch to keep that iceberg melting. Bigger block, bigger torch, you know how this works. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at these fans. They are also from Iceberg Thermal, and they are a bit crazy. But hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.